When we're shooting larger birds in flight with a Canon R5 100 to 500 millimeter lens, and we also have a times two converter to hand, we have a choice to make. In fact, it's a bit of a dilemma to decide if we're going to use the lens without the times two converter and maybe increase the ISO to a level that almost guarantees a sharp image, but it would require some noise suppression, especially if the images needed some cropping to give the birds more impact within the frame. Cropping doesn't make noise worse, of course, but it does make it a little easier to see. Alternatively, do we shoot with a two times converter, retain the high ISO in the hope that we'll not have to crop quite so much to fill the frame with the bird? But remember, hand holding a 1000mm lens on a cliff top in windy conditions while tracking a bird can be a challenge, but it's certainly doable. Of course, the one aspect here that we have no control over at all is how close will the birds be to us. Now, if we knew that in advance, then the choice of using the converter or not will be much easier to make. Here I made the decision to use the times 2 converter, but then the bird came too close for me to get it all in the frame. The most I could zoom out to was 600mm, and even that wasn't enough. Now, once we put the converter onto the R5 body, it's not a quick operation to remove it. Removing that converter is certainly not something we want to be doing, while the subject we've waited for, sometimes for quite a while, is right there in front of us, because by the time we've changed the lens, the bird could be 500 metres down the beach. There's also another variable that we may need to consider. The new denoise in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw is simply superb, and we could place more of our confidence in that. Noise from high ISO settings then become less of a dilemma. Another option, though, is to use the lens without a converter and set an ISO of something like 100. Perhaps we should put our trust a little bit more into the image stabilization of the R5 body and the lens, and of course ourselves. In those circumstances, if we need to crop to give the bird more impact, noise isn't much of an issue at all. But then we still have the denoise options up our sleeve should we need them. There's always been a healthy debate on whether we should increase the focal length of our lens with converters, which may introduce the risk of noise and unsharp images, or should we zoom out a bit and crop in our image editor. The problem, I think, in modern times is those balls have all been thrown in the air because we now have to consider denoise in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, which really is impressive and also the stabilisation of the camera body and the lens combined. As we look at these two original thumbnails in Adobe's Bridge, both were shot at 2000 ISO. One on the left is the basic 500mm lens, and here I was able to shoot with one eight thousandths of a second. The one on the right is with the converter, 1000mm, but that of course forced the f-stop to f14, which in turn impacts the shutter speed down to 16 hundredths of a second. Now as we look at both images, there's not a great deal to choose between them when we consider the size of the bird within the frame, but that was just down to luck. On the left hand side, the bird actually came closer to me, so it's larger in the frame with the 500mm. The one on the right, we could argue, I suppose, that the two times converter has earned its keep there, because without it, the bird would be much further away. So we haven't come to much of a conclusion here, have we? Perhaps there are just too many ifs, ands, and buts. 
Let's manipulate one image shot at 2000 ISO and we'll also apply the AI denoise to that shot. But alongside that another one shot at 100 ISO and I think it may be interesting to open them both up together in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm going to start by selecting the image which was shot at 2000 ISO. I'm going to go to my crop and I'm going to click and drag because I want the birds to be more or less the same size within the frame. So as you can see I'm cropping this one quite tightly. I'll hit the enter key. Selecting the other image I'm going to do the same. I need to get it more or less the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. And I'll hit the Enter key. And what I'll do to both of these images is to select both thumbnails and I'll hit the Auto button. I don't want to do a great deal of editing here because we want to be able to compare the two. So looking back at this one, not perfect. I'd like to do a little bit of work on this if I was going to produce this to finish. But for here, it's good enough. And this one is much the same. Maybe we could throw just a little more light in here. The automatic hasn't done quite as nice a job as it did with the other one. But there we've got something I think we can compare. But going back to the 2000 ISO, I'm going to go to my Detail tab and I'm going to apply the denoise. I'm going to apply the default somewhere around 50. I'm just going to accept what the software gives me. There you can see it. There we can see a before and after. Click before, after. Let's enhance that. And then I'm going to open up both of these images into Photoshop. Now as we look at these two shots in Photoshop, there's not a great deal to choose between them. The one we're viewing now is 2000 ISO. This one is 100 ISO, both shot with the 500 millimeter lens. Now if we're comparing the two, there isn't much to choose between them, certainly at this size, apart from the fact that they're lit slightly different, but that's not unusual. They were shot on different days. But let's go back to the 2000 ISO. And if we zoom in a little bit on the bird's head, we can see that we can get quite large on screen from such a small crop. And with the AI noise, it's almost noiseless. We've got a little bit in the sky, but then again, we would expect that with a zoom factor of, I think we've got something around 200% down at the bottom left corner. Now, as we look at the other image shot at 100 ISO at a similar zoom magnification, we can see there's very little difference between the two. So going back to the use of a two times converter on a 500 millimeter lens, that's probably an asset when our subject is a fair distance away from us, but it's unlikely to suddenly come much closer. For larger birds in flight, it's probably better to stay with the 500 millimeter lens because if they suddenly do come towards us and it's not uncommon for that to happen, then we can take full advantage of that. So as usual, there are no rights or wrongs, just judgment calls we're going to have to make at the time. And we'll win some and we'll lose some. What I've learned from this exercise is that the Ogre of High ISO has been tamed by AI denoise. If I can use 2000 ISO and I can't see any significant difference between a 2000 and a 100 ISO shot, then why use the low ISO, particularly with birds in flight? In a recent video, I mentioned the evolution of image editing. And if one thing is crystal clear at this point, the AI denoise in Photoshop and Lightroom is an important part of that evolution. I've always been a bit paranoid about keeping my ISO setting as low as possible and also filling the frame with my subject. 
Now that's not always possible with wildlife of course and while that technique results in good quality images it also increases the failure rate considerably. My logic was simple. Low ISO equals low noise and less cropping does much the same thing. Maybe to a lesser extent but every little helps. The exercise we've done here tells me to use my times two converter only when I'm pretty sure the subject is not likely to come too close to me. It's taught me also not to be too concerned about raising my ISO, certainly up to the level of 2000 and I suspect higher than that. The difference between 100 ISO and 2000 ISO is at least four stops. Now that could be the difference of shooting with a shutter speed of a five hundredth of a second or four thousandths of a second and that's pretty significant. Every time on a YouTube video when I see a demonstrator saying that this is going to be a game changer I'm pretty certain that it's going to be just clickbait. Perhaps on this particular occasion we're seeing the real deal. I'll see you next time.